Welcome to the Poisoner's Cabinet. I'm Sinead. And I'm Nick. And this is your weekly podcast exploring the lives of the great poisoners, macabre murders and captivating crimes from across the centuries and creating curious cocktails inspired by the tales that we tell. And it's episode 175. Hurrah. Hurrah. Yeah, it's 175. That seems like a, a high number. It's a big, big number. It's a big old number. This is what people tune in for, to hear us discussing numbers. Discussing numbers. Yeah. You know, that's an offshoot podcast we should have. Discussing, <laughs> discussing numbers. <laughs> I think it will do very well. I think it would. I think it would. Because it's I have... niche, but there's a, there's a market out there, I feel. I think I've said before, but I have strong feelings about numbers. Well, there we go, as many people do. Yeah. I'm sure they would love to hear our opinions on them. I've got favourite numbers. I've got least favourite numbers. And all the numbers in between. There are numbers in between, as I've, but I, I don't like to dabble in those. I know my lane. <laughs> I stay in my lane. How are you, Nick? Oh, well, I'm thinking about numbers now. Ooh, okay. what kind of numbers are you thinking of? I, I'm partial to a 13. 13's very good. Yes, I like it's a, not I like unlucky. People think it's unlucky, but I like a 13. It's my birthday's the 13th, so. Indeed. And you know you said that. This yeah. episode comes out on Friday oh, does, the 13th. It? Yes, I forgot. Yes, 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 it does. That wasn't oh, a setup, people. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we all this talk about numbers. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it just happens to be. No. That would be a bit lame if we'd done all of that and set it up to, hey, and it's Friday the 13th. We have That nothing. was entirely scripted. All of that was <laughs> tightly, tightly scripted. <laughs> <laughs> We've run out of ideas, people. <laughs> but yeah. you're well, otherwise. Apart from that, yes. Apart from that. And my shoulder. My shoulder hurts. What, why does your shoulder hurt? I don't know. It's definitely weirdly. <laughs> We're of that age now. Oh, we are. Oh, God, I am. <laughs> Is it just like a dull ache? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not just... really a stabbing pain or anything. Sorry, it has to be a stabbing pain. For, for, to elicit sympathy, yes. Like I can't even mention it. No. Unless my arm is hanging off. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of sinews hanging, connecting yeah. my arm. If it's not that, I just don't mention it. It's like you met my mother. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Broken arm. She was like, I suppose we'll take you to the hospital. Yeah, maybe. That actually happened. <laughs> so, well, it's obviously the level of sympathy I'm going to get from my, my massive wound. <laughs> you are a massive wound. <laughs> That's, that's a new insult that I'm quite into, actually. Harsh. Mm. Mm. Well, any poisonings this week? Shoulder poisoning. Shoulder poisoning. You have been... <gasps> what have you been poisoning in the shoulder? By a dart. Ooh, maybe so. Oh, my goodness. Maybe I've been, yes. Darted. Been darted. <laughs> Not been through many jungles of late. Um, it doesn't have to be in a jungle. This, this is true. Darts do exist outside of the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a weird way of doing it. <laughs> but no one would suspect it. Unless they're you, apparently. There you go. Oh, I'm a criminal mastermind. As long as it involves darts. Then all is well. Otherwise, I got nothing. I got no, nothing. No, otherwise, no clue. <laughs> but no other poisoning. No, I don't think so. It's also spooky month. Yes. We are deeply into spooky month. It being Friday the 13th, and whether you think that's unlucky or not, it's still spooky. We like it's, it. It's spooky. We have got a little trip coming up that we're taking to Cornwall, to the wilds of Cornwall. We're going to yeah. be doing some special Patreon content while we're down there. We go, we're going away. If people are in our houses. Don't rob us. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're in Cornwall, send us shit. Just say hi. Just say, just say hi. Where should we go? Where's, where's good in Cornwall? <laughs> exactly. Dress up like death and just stand across a field waving at us. Love it. But also, as we approach Halloween, we love your feedback on what we can do for this year's Halloween episode. We've got some thoughts. We usually follow... Have we? Th- I have. You, yeah, you say every time you, we're coming up to something, we've got thoughts. You keep them to yourself a lot of the time. I tell you afterwards. I say, this is what we're doing. <laughs> this, this is what you need to do for tomorrow. Okay, fine. And it all works out share, seamlessly. Share your thoughts with the, with the class. Yeah, share. No, 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 no. I want it to be a surprise if it comes off. But we would love your suggestions of what we can do for Halloween. Maybe there's some spooky true crime or crime related stories that we haven't covered yet. They need to have a crime because we are a true crime podcast, mm. but something a bit more spooky. Is there something big we haven't done yet? I mean, is there? That is the question. Is there? Jump on social media, send us a DM, send us an email if you want to. Scream it out the window. We'll probably hear it. Yeah, yeah. But do send us your suggestions. Well, speaking of good things happening on Friday the 13th. And screaming out of windows. And <laughs> having a bad shoulder. Having bad shoulders. Being darted but everywhere mm. you go. I think it's time for us to thank our delicious Patreon subscribers. Absolutely. Dab hands with the darts, I'm sure they are. Uh, <laughs> Make them sound like they're down a working man's club. <laughs> Which is great. It's not, yeah. Ta- oh, I've, I've, I've thought oh, sorry, now. hang on. Did you, have, did you ever see Young Sherlock? I did Back didn't. in the day. No. Oh, there was a whole, it was, yes, it was a whole, obviously, young Sherlock Holmes in boarding school. And the, the, the whole thing was, was Poison Darts. The whole series, or was it one episode? No, it was, no, it was one, like, a feature-length film 
type for TV type thing. I mean, this was this was like twenty years ago, and sure? it was yeah, no, absolutely. Because I remember because my cousin was in it what? as an extra. What and he was he was he, as an extra. Was he the dart? No. <laughs> Life size dart shuffling in. Hello, Hello. I'm a MacGuffin. <laughs> He's got a really pointy hat. <laughs> well, okay, no one watched that because we know it's darts now. So yeah, so yeah, drew my poison darts. Reminded me of that. So okay. go. go and watch it. It's really good. There's dancing cakes. It's really good. What the hell? Were you drunk? Is Did this exist? It does Were you exist. just round your co- cousin's house nope. smoking shit <laughs> and then All he just real. waved a cake and there's in an front Egyptian, of you? And there's an Egyptian oh, no, pyramid there under London. No, no there, there there, I think they're in Oxford, not London. Because London would be ludicrous. Yeah, London Sorry. would be crazy. What fever dream is oh, you this? Must, it's great. You must watch it. You must watch right, it. Now I need to yeah. watch this. It sounds Young amazing. Thriller. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. <laughs> anyway, yes, moving on to... Are we doing patrons? That's what yes, we are. Yes, let's do I bet they've seen the film. It's great. Thank you very much. Firstly... To Jolene Bennett. To Mae Jensen. To Mrs. Kane. And to Ari. Marvellous. Thank lovely, you very much, darling. Lovely, sexy, sexy Patreon subscribers. We had fun on Patreon this week. We Isn't had it? we had the tale of two Giovannis. Oh, we did. We did. Two Italian men locked in It was in only battle. yesterday and I've forgotten all about it. <laughs> you always forget. Always do. It was my episode. Go wiped on. from your mind. Yeah. It was good, that one. It was nice and bitchy. I liked it. Like, who doesn't love some bitchy Italians? <laughs> <laughs> some bitchy Italians. In Banbury. <laughs> but <laughs> Italians and in Banbury. Also, we have shouted out to our patrons this month. We are having a special book club just before Halloween where we are going to be discussing our book of the month, Dracula. The classic, which we're all reading. Now, Patreons get to join a very special Zoom chat. We do this regularly with with book club. This month, we're going to get spooky. We're going to dress up a little bit. We may have some readings and things like that. If you want to know what the hell we're talking about and you also <laughs> love spooky stuff, you might consider joining us if you feel able patreon is minimum five dollars a month if you want to join us there's higher tiers if you feel comfortable you can find out all about it at patreon.com forward slash the poisonous cabinet or drop us a message anytime you would like to have more info one thing we also have to do is a shout out and we have to apologize because this is a late shout out it is from the lovely lovely darcy crofts who wanted to give a shout out to her mum who had their birthday last week and so sorry that we missed this we're so sorry that we missed your actual birthday kelly we love you. Hi. I know you're also known as Plum. <laughs> okay. And we won't ask follow-up questions. We Indeed. definitely Best will. We but very, very happy birthday and thank you to Darcy Many for birthday. sending that in. Well, Nick, are you ready? Oh, yes. Drink cocktails and talk about boys. Let's do it. Oh, we can drink boys and talk about cocktails. Let's do that too. Okay, okay, that is good. Okay, should we go with the first one? Yes. Yeah, hooray, hooray, okay. hooray. It is my story this week, and we can't, we can't, we can't possibly have a story without a cocktail in hand. As you know, dear listeners, every week we choose a secret ingredient that is inspired by the tale that we tell, and it will flavor our cocktail of the week. My story, so my pick, and this week's secret ingredient is, Nick, mm. an especially evil nut. <laughs> right. I mean, how many times have you had a go at me for just <laughs> bollocky, stupid, secret ingredients? Mm. I gave you several you, options. No, no. You, I did. No, you, I, I, this would be the hill I die on. I gave you two other options that you could have worked with. Oh, I could have worked with chicken skin or buffalo. Yeah. Right. It's not very good for an ingredient. No, but there is an ingredient, but I can't tell you what the ingredient is because it would give away the story, but it is an especially evil nut. Well, that's what we went with. We went with an especially evil nut. As your ingredient? Yeah. What did you come up with? Well, so you could have just said nut, and that opens it up slightly. We've had nuts before. So making an especially evil nut <laughs> then meant I had to spend several hours contemplating the nature of nuts. <laughs> I just got a picture of you staring wistfully out a window. Exactly, yeah. I was. I was, I was like looking up at a tree. <laughs> going, what is a nut? Which which nuts are specifically evil? Of the standard nuts. I mean, there's almonds. I don't find oh, almonds no, particularly almonds evil. Almonds my favourite. Almonds yeah. my favourite. I would go with a peanut because they're um, the, the, the most uh, prevalent with the allergies. Uh, and you open a bag of peanuts on a plane... Someone's got an allergy. That's bad luck. Well, that's, not bad that's... luck. It's bad news. <laughs> yes, yeah, just... Oh no! <laughs> seven, seven years, seven bad, years luck, bad luck because you're dead, and that person's dead. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Anyone who's got a nut allergy. Um, and even I mean, a walnut looks like it's had a past. Yeah, they hide in their shell. They look. They look a bit dodge. Macadamia nut, very expensive. Oh, I like a macadamia nut. Yeah, but um, creamy, a bit excessive. You oh, can only have so many. I like a macadamia. I like a pecan. Oh, a pecan. They're a, they're a tasty nut. You see, th- that is a nut 
like a pistachio that is infinitely better roasted. Yeah, pistachios. They're not evil. They're not evil. I love them in an ice cream. So there we go. I mean, how is one to narrow down a (laughs) especially evil nut? (laughs) What have you come up with, Well, I, I I did manage to identify... (laughs) <laughs> a particular evil nut. The one that we have mentioned as looking a bit dodgy. Okay. I decided the walnut hey! was the mo- was the most <laughs> evil of them all. It does look a bit gnarled. It lo- yeah, exactly. And it looks like a brain. It's thinking. It's planning. It's plotting. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's up to no good. It's it's taking over the world. It's making plans. Oh. And I thought of the of all the walnuts, what is the worst kind of walnut? What's the worst kind of walnut? Yeah. A black walnut. Are the black walnuts? <laughs> The black walnuts, especially the bitter black walnuts. <laughs> You've just angled this in there. <laughs> Why did I not see this coming? <laughs> so, I'm sorry, I thought it was damn good. <laughs> That's brilliant. I, I like you see, this is why we have the obscure ingredients. Because look at the genius, Nick. There was a whole story. You took the us whole on a journey. Story, a whole story. The black walnut bitters. Yes, indeed. That you bought a while ago because you're very excited. Yes. Well, I bought well, you them. Bought them. Oh, yeah, I did. You bought I them for gifted me. them to you. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, because you wouldn't shut up about them. Yeah, I know. Right. So I'll get a chance to use them again. Hooray! So we're having a cocktail. We are having a Bastille. A Bastille. Okay, okay, we're Where okay. the walnuts are locked up. Because <laughs> they're evil. <laughs> In the deepest, darkest cells. <laughs> oh, God, now I have an image of some, some walnuts armed storming the Bastille. It's okay, because the French do slightly figure in this story. Oh, there we go. It was all meant to be. <laughs> Love it. I'm so excited to try a Bastille, <laughs> very much heavily featuring <laughs> black walnuts. Some evil walnuts. I think it's high time for us to shimmy into the poisonous cabinet kitchen and shake up a storm. So we'll see you in a minute. We'll see you in a bit. And we're back. Hello. So Nick. The Bastille. Mm, the Bastille. The Bastille. Now it's brown. Brown. But it is served with a cube of ice. A big chunky cube big, of ice. Big chunky cube of ice. It's very rare that we have a brown drink with a cube of ice. This is true. Yeah. That doesn't have a hint of red or something, like a Mulvadi <clears throat> or something. But yeah, I'm intrigued. It smells of alcohol. It smells of good alcohol. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> okay. What What are you eating? Aromas? Oh, good aromas. Good aromas. Nice things. <gasps> I'm smelling nice things. Yeah, actually. Oh, that's like a core memory is unlocked, but I don't know what it's for. <laughs> Your previous life at the Bastille. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I have a feeling I was a god. <laughs> yeah, you did unpleasant things to people. I was with the Aristos, <laughs> definitely. Going yeah. more. Ca- I thought I was a revolutionary, but I didn't do well. No. I think I'd be the first one at the front running in, but I'm sure and just get kicked in the face. Okay. Which side has the cake? <laughs> you would yeah exactly you that's me yeah literally be there combing marie antoinette's yeah. many wigs so you've got cake i'm on your side whispering in her ear going just tell them to eat brioche it's lovely <laughs> lovely in a burger anyway yeah. enough of this We're moving on. <laughs> it's moving on for the bastille <laughs> let's dive in so merry christmas merry christmas oh that's Ooh. very pleasant <gasps> oh nick that's mm, so mm, good mm, 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 mm. What 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 magic is this? Oh oh, that's good. That's I so like good. I like I like a lot. Oh, it's been a while since we've had a really good one. I know. I was just going to say, <laughs> that's so good. I mean, that's hitting all the oh all ooh, the places. Oh, I'm happy. <laughs> Sitting all the, I was going to say it's ticking all the boxes, but then I mixed it up with hitting all the spots. <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh, I'm nice. so happy. Nice. It's got good mouth feel as well. Yeah. Whatever the black walnuts are doing. They're doing well. More of that. More of that. You that's evil a, bastards. Oh, that's a symphony of flavours. I have to guess what's you in do, this yeah, now. Give me, you do, right. give me some guesses. Well, you know one. Black walnuts. There we <laughs> go. <laughs> and I can, I can smell the walnuts. I can't necessarily yeah. taste them. I, I can't really There's buy, a good there's nutty. A definite, there's a definite nutty smell going on. But walnuts are a very distinctive flavour, mm. though. Okay, so a strong brown spirit. I'm going to go with cognac. No, wait. Sorry, I don't, it's not who wants to be a millionaire. I don't know okay. why I'm doing this. Is it Cognac or is it Calvados? You don't, you have to tell me. <laughs> we can't stay in perpetual silence. It is Cognac. <gasps> yes, 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 yes. But the, I, the recipe itself, of course, from Ar- for Armagnac, didn't have any of that, mm, mm. but uh, substituted for Cognac, which we did have Because you've got good Cognac at the moment. Yeah, and it's a nice, it's a nice quivacier. But there's other things? There are two other things. Two, two, as well as the bitters? As well as the bitters. Okay, two other things. Love? No. 
Happiness? None of that. Sunshine? No. Kittens? No. No. Oh, a, a vermouth? Oh, not mm, not quite. Not quite. An amaro? Not quite. Uh, tequila? Ish. I don't know what. <laughs> so there's the, we have a Cochi Americano. That's a thing. Wait, wait, it's, it's definitely a thing. It's definitely a thing. It's one which of the is, things I said is... probably. Which does it actually bridge the gap between a Well, yeah, and vermouth. it's sort of vermouth sort of way. Well, it's sort of it's vermouth adjacent because vermouth is great base, <laughs> but it also has other botanically things in there as well. It does. Whereas the cochi, the, it's an aromatized wine. It's known as, which is mm. mainly just grape based. There are no other bits and pieces in there. Yeah, every time we have a cochi americano in a cocktail, it's always good. Yeah. It's also the same sort of family as like the Lille Blanc, same same sort of thing. Okay, we got that um, in there. That, so we got we got some of that in there. We got that spirit forward. And there's one other thing. <laughs> okay, maraschino. No. Shit. <laughs> Give me a clue. Twiggy. So not fo- no, it's not, it's not that. <laughs> Sorry, Don't my worry. life flashed before my eyes. There, my soul <laughs> perhaps, left my body. Herby might be the better way to describe you, it. Herby, Herby. Uh, Benedictine. Benedictine. Oh, is it? Benedictine. Ooh, Complete guess, but have nicely done. That. Bloody it's hell. Brandy. 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 The cochi. Cognac. Uh, excuse uh, cognac. me. Cognac. <laughs> <laughs> Benedictine. <gasps> the cochi americano, and some walnut bitters. Stir together, and then just strained over us. Bloody hell! It's good. Oh my god, it's that so is good! Really nice, really, People. really, really nice, and it's not. Yeah, it's not that it doesn't have that bittery twang like a Negroni or anything like that. But no, it, but it reminds me of that sort of drink. Yeah, of that. Yes, I, I see a, what you mean. But a lot just there's a lot smoother. It's well, that. three ingredients and a dash of bitters, yeah. and there you, you're good to go. It's smooth, but it's smooth and lovely. It doesn't works. taste overly strong. It's it's not something no. like a Red Hook where you you drink something and it goes Ugh, and it just punches you in the face. <laughs> okay. um, I will counter that. Nick, okay. It does. <laughs> Perhaps, perhaps that might, that's my terrifying. Uh, you can't even um, taste it. I'm sorry. sitting there going, I'm drunk. Okay. You're the sort of person who just perhaps eats a chili that's, that's raw. Just me. <laughs> no, I think the first sip you can taste it spirit forward. It's so smooth, so lovely, so aromatic. Guys, this is, oh, that is up there. That is yeah. a make again. That's a winner. In a minute. <laughs> if you've been listening to this show for long enough, maybe you'll have bought cognac. Maybe you'll have got Kochi Americano. And I would recommend getting that because every cocktail we've had Kochi in Works. has been delicious. It's so subtle and so nice. Benedictine, such a random thing, but I bet your parents have a bottle yeah, of it somewhere. You always have a random bottle in the back of a cupboard. Yeah, and it comes out and it works. Mm. And those black walnut bitters. <laughs> and a beautiful name. Mm. Oh my god. It's, de- it's deceptive. I'm going to celebrate with more cashew nuts. Right, well, we're, okay, right. There's going to be rustling in this be episode. Rustling and crunching <laughs> as Nick munches his way through a bag of cashew nuts. Absolutely demolishes a bag of cashew nuts. Oh, yes, I'm hungry. There yeah. we are. So, with the Bastille firmly in hand, mm. revolutionaries as we are, and a big handful of cashew nuts. I mean, for you. I've got my drinks, I've got my snacks. Come on, bring it on. Are you ready for a story? Oh, gosh, yeah. Yay! So, this week, Nick. We have the tale of a queen, a queen who ruled with a venomous hatred for anyone who defied her beliefs or her country. Nice. It is the story of the woman known as the Bloody Queen, the Cruel Queen, the Mad Queen. It is the story of Queen Ranavalona, the first of Madagascar. I oh I I've so nearly done this story before, <laughs> but it's, mainly I didn't because I couldn't pronounce things because all of the names are like ah shit. And why I did this person who cannot pronounce anything <laughs> at all. Yeah, so buckle in, people, in terms of the pronunciations. Yeah. But this story, it's it's one. Excuse my pronunciation all the way through. But the Queen Rana Valona of Madagascar, described by one explorer, female explorer. She is certainly one of the proudest and cruelest, <laughs> didn't write it right, women on the face of the earth. And her whole history is a record of bloodshed and deeds of horror. Well, how delightful. Now, this is a woman that, if all the reports are to be believed, is up there with Elizabeth Bathory. Yeah. Is up there with all the evil countesses and all the evil queens that we could imagine and the evil kings and the evil mm. rulers across the centuries. Her story isn't told as much though also a lot of the sources of this are not entirely unbiased yeah 
This is a story that takes place in the 1800s. So we're not talking about centuries and centuries where we can't even trust the resources there. The fact is that accounts of her life are going to be written by her enemies and by white people. Yeah. So white people and also the people she persecuted who want to paint a picture of her in a certain way. Some of the accounts lean so heavily into the absolute mania mm. that has been whipped up around this woman that you have to kind of go, okay, really? really? She was probably a delight. She was <laughs> lovely. Well, we'll Kittens leave- for everyone, first rule. <laughs> It is up to people to decide. There are plenty of people who are sort of calling for a a revisionist kind of autobiography of her. The fact is... Yeah, she mm, did some shit. Yeah, she did some shit. The sources are what they are. (laughs) So I have poured through quite a lot, actually. And this did actually end up with me going through a deep dive of the other sources. I had many sources to choose from. And I looked at quite a few from, from Madagascar as well, as much as I could to translate... I looked through Wiki and there was quite a lot on Wiki that I went, that shouldn't be in there. Yeah. Yeah. Not in my own personal opinion, but we kind of look into it and go, really? You're not questioning this source here at all? Because it's the one source Mm. of that time about someone. There's not a lot of resources about her. So anyway, that's the caveat. We all know where Madagascar is, don't we, Dick? Yes, off the coast of India. Mm -mm. Off the coast of Africa. Yes. (laughs) It's in the Indian Ocean. Yeah, Indian Ocean. Yeah, Indian Ocean. <laughs> right. Indian, the... India was in there somewhere. <laughs> India was in this. Oh, That's Nick. pathetic. It really is pathetic. <laughs> and it's, off, it's off the it's to the right hand side. You're making hand gestures and they're not helping. It's to the right hand side. It's the south southeast coast <laughs> yeah. of Africa, just off there. I but it is, a, it is on the route to India, yeah. so you're not completely wrong. It's not like you said it's near Japan. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the road to somewhere. <laughs> it's left of England and then to Australia. That's yeah. it. So it's off the southeast coast of Africa. Also, it's worth mentioning Madagascar experiencing pretty savage famine at the moment due mm. to climate crisis. One of the most beautiful places in the world. One of the least developed countries in the world as well. But we're not going there now. No. At the time period we're visiting, it was known as the Kingdom of Madagascar. Now, Madagascar has a lengthy history in terms of the different rulers and its different names as well. So it's got what we would call indigenous names. It's got different re- references to kingdoms. I'm going to stick with calling it Madagascar all the way through this. Yeah. But it is ruled by a line of the Marina nobles, and that's the largest ethnic group in the country. The island is also firmly in the sights of many European rulers mm. and explorers, nicely on the way to India. So Good England, off point. Britain, Britain, Great Britain thinks, ooh, ooh, colonies. We'll have a bit of that. Lovely. We like that. We like that. French fond of that too as well mm. because they're very busy in Africa. It's going, hmm, more stuff. <laughs> we like stuff. We like stuff. But Rana Valona was born in 1778 and her birth name is Ramavo and she is born into poverty. Mm-hmm. She does not come from a noble background. She is the daughter of a tribesman, a a commoner, essentially. And she had ahead of her a life of hardship. But her father, her father, has some good luck. (laughs) Because he hears about a plot to assassinate the king of the time. And the king's name... (laughs) Good luck with this. Right, okay. I actually got my husband to come in the room earlier today and work out how to say this. (laughs) Adrian Nam Poin Imirina. First time. Nicely done. <laughs> if it's right, fantastic. Forever it's known as, as the king who went before. The king who went before. <laughs> I like that. The <laughs> translation of his name, according to a, a magazine, a prominent magazine from Madagascar, is the one who will always stay in the Marina's hearts. Oh. And also can be translated as the king who is not like the stupid. <laughs> now, this king is... I'm not going to go into his whole history. He is quite beloved as a king in, in history. In their hearts, apparently. Yep, <laughs> in so. his hearts. It remains a heroic figure for, for many, many years and also today. Did a huge amount to unify all the territories. There were a lot of different territories split up before mm. it became the kingdom of Madagascar and it had different names and then became Madagascar as it is today. 
But no, it turned out the king's own uncle wanted him dead. Bastard. Because he wanted to be the king. Very lying. Kingish. And there is a lot of Game of Thrones esque. I'm just going to say it that sort of like plundering for power, particularly on the Iron Islands sort of vibe of like, <laughs> no, whatever happens, I will kill whoever is in front of me. Oh no. But this commoner, the commoner, warned the king and the plot was foiled. And so moved was the king by this gesture, so grateful, is that he rewarded the man by betrothing the king's son, Prince Radimer to Ramova. Oh, okay. Well, one way to get ahead. Yeah, now, that's a really good gesture. Then, uh, yeah, I've got my son going, do I get to say this? No. No, 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 no. The king has 11 sons and 12 daughters by his many, many wives. Many, many, many wives. But ah, he has named Radama his heir. <gasps> so she's going to marry she's gonna be queen. the future king. And mm. not only that, she's going to be his first wife. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. So Ramova is going to be queen one day quite the honor now the line of succession is an odd one radama i know there's a lot of renoma radama radama <laughs> the, the the heir the king the future king was not the eldest of his yeah. children but the king had said okay you're going to be my him. heir if you are pronounced the king if you're my heir all of your children and any of the children that your spouses mm. produce will be in line and they will ascend to the throne to ensure that the line of succession continued the king had his eldest son killed Okay. And this is a pattern you're going to see a lot. Right. In yes. here. As soon as you name a successor, kill everyone else. Get rid of the others. Literally kill everybody else. Yeah. It's fine. Because they're going to try and kill you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. When the king dies in 1810, Radama I ascends to the throne. He's just 18. And his first bride is Ramova. She is 15 years older than him. Okay. <laughs> but her children will be future rulers. Mm. As was tradition... Radama killed many, many members of her family. So no one would have a chance mm. of usurping him to the throne or claiming anything. Her whole family, anyone who was close to her, killed. His own family members, yeah. killed. Anyone Just who questioned it, did. Get rid of it. Anyone else who's got a claim to anything. 100%. Kill them off. So it's a bitter pill to swallow because you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to be queen and I'm going to be the, the first wife and I'll have riches and a nice house and courtiers, but also you're going to kill my family. You're going to kill everyone I've ever known. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. New king, the young man, takes 12 wives in total during his reign, but his first wife, the only one who will be called queen, is Ramova. She's not his favourite. Meh. She is older than him. Not by much, by what, 15 years? It's she, not it, it's, a small number. It's not a small number. And she's apparently quite vocal. Yeah. Vocal. She's chatty. She has thoughts in her head. Oh, my God. Mm. No one wants that in a wife. Outspoken, didn't agree with his policies and his decisions, and he thought her noisy. Oh. Noisy. Can Nobody I... wants a noisy wife. No one wants to sit there and look pretty. Just do some sewing. So, yes, embroider things. <laughs> <laughs> Write something to someone. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Radama is carrying on the work of his father before him. He's trying to unite the country, but he's very interested, he's more interested, and as it was his father, in forging ties with Europeans. Uh, and he does sign a treaty with the British. With the British, kind of like a friendship sort of alliance. Well, uh, is, with Is that all get blown to pieces? By cannons from the many, many boats we're well, surrounding your islands by. Not so much. They're not. They're not actually going. We'll blow you to pieces because they'll be like, "Well, come on, then. We'll we'll go to war with Africa." You know, it's more. Let's let's be friendly. Let's friendly, be friendly, friendly, friendly. It's all very nice. But your cricket rules, kind of thing. In 1817, it allows lots of Christian missionaries to come to oh. the island. Yes, come in, preach the word of our Lord. You, you weird, sad. weird heathens. <laughs> <laughs> and also they'll you know, can you can you just sort of calm down on your slave trading mm. to to madagascar and they're like yeah. you know, can, can, can you not so much really yes. uh, and they're like oh yeah we'd like to keep hold of that really <laughs> 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 on the sly everyone <laughs> this horrified uh Ramova, the young queen she saw this any sort of dealing with the europeans as a suppression of her country's traditional faiths and the ancestors and their beliefs and this is a thing she held true to her heart all the way through her life. Mm -hmm. This was her sort of defining quality. As such, things weren't rosy in the bedroom no. of the king and queen. He wanted to go and see all his other hot wives. <laughs> so no children were produced. Well, no that's, that's, that's not good. No. You need an heir. You need an heir. 
And the queen sort of was bored for many years, kind of floated around court, hanging out with her, her ladies of court. Mm. Again, this reference as well from, from a questionable source that she hung out with one of the Welsh missionaries who came to Madagascar, a man named David Griffiths, who had a very interesting life as a missionary. She didn't really like Christians, but maybe he had good rum. Apparently yeah. she was drinking rum with them as well, but like, mm, yeah. can't really be stood up. But maybe that happened. She is quietly seething in the background until July 1828, when the king falls ill. Oh. Very, very ill. Very, 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 very stabby sort of ill. Mm, yeah, well, <laughs> he dies. He dies, okay. How he died is a sort of matter of debate. Okay. Now, Radama was a drunkard. All of his life. Well documented. And his official cause of death is death by heavy intoxication. Well, that'll do it. Mm, it's a good way to go. Not so much. People sort of question, like, you know, did he die from drunkenness? Did he fall mm. down? It was cirrhosis of the liver. All of those things are sort of passed around. Others, the rumour mill starts. Did he literally drink himself to death? Did he take his own life? If he was suffering from extensive pain, some people have it that he cut his own throat with his own dagger. Others say he died from syphilis. Delightful. So if you're in syphilis and you're the king, then maybe we say, oh, no, no, he died from drinking too much because he was such a lad. <laughs> mm. And others would, of course, whisper that he may have been dispatched by a rival mm. or an enemy or maybe his first wife. There's no evidence to support that whatsoever. But he's dead. But he's dead. Whatever happens, he's dead. He dead. A nice tradition in the family as well. The king before him and him as well. He was buried in a silver coffin. Nice. In a tomb on the grounds of the royal palace. And his tomb was surrounded by jewels and firenery and a mirror and table and chairs and a bed. And a nice jug with water and also some rum that was replenished every year. Nice. Well, Just in gotta, case he woke up. Well, indeed. You've got to be prepared for the afterlife and all that sort of thing. In case you have company. Yeah, exactly. So yes. isn't that? <laughs> Good to have options. But now we have the problem of succession, Nick. Mm. Ooh, yeah, no well, direct heir yeah, to no, the throne. No heir. That's not going to no work heir. well. Tradition would dictate that his sister's son, his nephew, Rakatobi, would ascend. Now, he is in line, and there's enough people at court who are like, oh, yeah, actually, we, we quite like him. The two courtiers who were with the king when he died were really big fans of young Rakatobi, and they were prepared to speak out for him. But they decided they should hide the news of the king's death for about two days until they could sort of work out an action plan of putting Ooh. the nephew... To the front. Mm, yeah. Cunning. Essentially, oh, very Game of Thrones. Lots of plotting going on behind mm, the scenes. Yeah, he died, but then there's two factions. There's the Queen's faction, there's the Nephew's faction. Also, other people are going, oh, hello. Hello, I can yes. Make, like, oh, shut up, you. <laughs> shut up, you. Um, I'm the fourth cousin, twice removed. <laughs> and I, I think I'm I up think for the job. I'd be great. <laughs> it's also... Do you not know what happened to everyone else beforehand? Don't... I would keep your mouth shut if I were you. Yeah, unless you've got a really strong chance of winning. There's even rumours that the courtiers who were with the king when he died, one of them was the queen's lover. But there was two days. No one knew the king was dead. I don't know if they full-on weekend at Bernie'd him. Like, had him walking around the streets going, la, 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 la. I'm sure they were much more respectful. Maybe. Just propped him up on a chair vaguely. <laughs> with, a, with a newspaper and a cigar. A newspaper and a Bastille <laughs> in the fine. hand. <laughs> he's fine. He's, he's, he's chilling out. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, eventually the news has to come out that the king is dead. This delay may have cost them their advantage, mm. though, because they obviously hadn't hidden the fact the king was dead. Enough whispers go through... Difficult thing to keep quiet, I feel. Yeah, the whispers go through the courtiers yeah. and everything, and all the people who are in the support of the queen, she starts gathering her own spies and her own supporters. They not only ensure that she's kept safe, that no one comes and kills her, because they, they would, yeah. they absolutely would cut her down. They keep her safe, but also work to secure support for her ascension to the throne. They say that they whisper around that this is their God's will, this is the ancestors' will. This is what they want. And on the 11th of August, 1828, Ramova declares herself as Radama's successor based on her dead husband's non-existent wishes. And she had enough support. Well, yeah. So she rises to the throne as Queen Ranavalona I. And she has nice. her coronation in 1829. So, yes. Good for her. Again, you have to remember this is the 1800s. We're yeah. not talking like way, way back. <laughs> At her coronation, she gives this quite famous speech where she proclaims Never say she is only a feeble and ignorant woman. How can she rule such a vast empire? 
I will rule here to the good fortune of my people and the glory of my name. I will worship no gods but those of my ancestors. The ocean shall be the boundary of my realm. I will not cede the thickness of one hair of my realm. Oh, fighting talk. Good for her. At her coronation, she really favoured European fashion, Mm. even if she wasn't a fan of the Europeans. So she wore a dress in the French style. In the, oh, the French style. In the French okay. style. Lots of red, red silk. Lots of flowing red oh, okay. silk. Gold buttons. Well, make you stand out, won't it? Yeah, me yeah, well. Everyone else is in traditional dress and you're in there in a fancy European frock. Well, she would and adapt gonna... them. She would She would get European dress, but she would adapt pieces of the Malagas style mm. into it. So she would put her initials in there and sort of, and, and also different tropes Charles in there. Chance it up a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah. she loved that style, but she wanted to make it kind of like a her twist on yeah, it. Yeah, you need to yeah, go, yeah. 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 Like it. So, she starts her reign, of course, by killing all of her rivals. Of course. Yeah, yeah. That's what everyone does. Uh, Rakatobi, whole family, wiped out. Yeah. Yeah, dead, 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 dead. Anyone who murmured about wanting to be king had to be killed. She followed an ancient custom where it was said that no royal blood should ever be spilled. So she had them strangled. Ha! <laughs> nice. Like it. Except for Rakatobi's mother, who she had in prison in a cell and let starve to death. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. But still, no blood. No blood was spilled. No blood. Gods are happy. Now in her power, she has her sights set on the reform that she wants from the previous kings. Unlike her former husband and her father-in-law before that, she wanted no accord with Europe. Mm. No, Madagascar will be its own kingdom, literally the kingdom of Madagascar, with no outsiders. She wants it to thrive on its own with, with no foreign influence, and she wants to adhere to the old ways and traditions. She tore up the treaty her late husband had forged with Britain, literally and figuratively, Mm. starts cutting off ties with foreign trade lines as well. We will be self-sufficient. Very much does this by championing her own export of slaves. Mm. Yeah, so a lot of slave trade. Yeah. 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 This has been one of the things that had been banned by the treaty with Britain, as I said earlier, but she undid that. No, 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 we have slaves, we'll trade them. We've got plenty of people here. Mm. Yes, and you want people to have them. She would, in the background, of course, amass her own army and use the armies to amass more territories and expand the size of Madagascar, um, fend off invading armies and plunderers, and also employ the use of forced labour in lieu of taxes. Yeah. Yeah. So just like, ah, citizens, you'll work for us. Why? (laughs) For free! It's not not an ideal utopian society, I feel, Mm. that she's created. But she sees this as all beneficial to the future Uh of her country. (laughs) And crucially, she begins restricting the lives and practices of the Christians. Now, maybe they didn't ask the Christians to come. Well, no, that's true. But they had been welcomed in the past and they had set up churches and they had set up libraries and they had set up schools and they'd done a lot of work. Yes, preaching the word of one Lord. She doesn't want this. No, 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 no. Let's start to gently undo all the work of the Christians. She will not allow any more baptisms. The ones who are already here, okay, will tolerate you, but no more. No, 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 no indoctrinate no anyone. No recruiting. You won't be treated badly if you stay, or would you? <laughs> we'll see. But you won't be treated well either. So. <laughs> <laughs> won't, be, won't be looked on favourably. Her physical appearance, interestingly, is a contradictory one, because this is where all of the accounts of how the Queen looked are from all the white Westerners. Yeah. Yeah, so she was always just about exotic, tall, tall woman. She was called powerful. But again, this is from the perspective of a lot of English people who have got Queen Victoria and kind yeah. of go, she's the ideal queen, this big lofty bitch. No, we don't <laughs> yes. like her at all. This, this three foot tall, 20 stone uh, woman is the ideal queen. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the writings about her are of her immediately huge, tyrannical, mad tribal woman. So, you know, pr- pretty racist take on it. She was, even though she, you know, made her coronation speech, which is, you know, pretty powerful, she was quite private. She was said mm-hmm. to, to not want to speak in public that much. It was very likely she was illiterate, but that was because the Malagas language had not been written down until uh. very recently, literally during her reign. So couldn't have read speeches and couldn't have done those sort of long speeches. So she, she preferred not to, but she was sort of intensely quiet, but she liaised with all of her courtiers and was said to sort of, lean on talismans and all these sorts of things people whispered whispered about her she uses this power to her advantage or maybe the the silence that she put across could be used to her advantage because people just could see her sort of moving about oh she's plotting she's plotting (laughs) whispers about her taste for cruel punishment she would never remarry she had children with her favorites 
with people in court and they were deemed to be the heirs of the previous king. So they were in line for the throne. Her, her kids, because she'd been married to the she'd king. she'd been married, yeah. Yeah, she like who she likes, which is quite nice. Oh, yeah. quite nice. Good yeah. for her. Um, there were some reports. Again, I couldn't get this stood up, but I heard one case of where she declared herself a man to prevent further alliance. Now, I don't know if that's figuratively. Well, she was like, literally. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think she was, but it was <laughs> like, no, I'm not going to marry again, so don't rack up anything yeah. in front of me. Again, this is, this is probably hearsay or apocryphal, so it's interesting. Yeah. Now, things escalated substantially in 1835. I've heard her sort of gently going, no, I don't really like the Christians. It's when she fell very ill that year. And she fell so ill, it was feared she would die. This was a really horrific illness. What it was, we don't exactly know. But she was at death's door. But then suddenly the queen emerged from her chambers miraculously well. Miraculously well, cured of all ailments. And of everyone around her going, what the hell has happened? And she said it was because she'd prayed to her ancestors to the old gods who were true gods, to save her. And she felt that the gods of her ancestors had protected her and now she must purge her land of Christianity. She gonna crank it up a notch. Missionaries who hadn't already been encouraged to leave were banished. Anyone who had remained or had been converted to Christianity were dragged before the queen and they were forced to undergo the famous trial by ordeal Um. involving a very evil nut. (laughs) <laughs> is that the bean is that the the evil yes i think i know the bean you're calling it a bean yeah would you like a drink oh yeah i would actually yes before, <laughs> before i go on about the bean <laughs> save the bean talk for later so nick yep the queen is on her rampage against christianity mm. she needs a very evil nut <laughs> to do her work now you keep laughing <laughs> so what's your bean theory oh is this the, is this the calabar no Oh, uh, okay. I'm thinking of something different then. Well, well, let's come back to that in okay. a bit. Love to hear about that okay. one. If you were in Madagascar at the time in the kingdom, if you possessed a Bible, you went to church, you were seen going to the church, if you sort of kind of went like, oh, Christianity's okay, you were going to be punished. You were going to face death. Now, if you were outright a Christian, yep, you could face all of the horrible, horrible deaths that you can imagine. So you could be starved to death, you could be pushed off a cliff, you could be speared to death, boiled alive, beaten and beheaded. Such fun. Other torments that were laid out in front of you, you could be sawn in half, skinned alive, crush the testicles. Don't do that. Mm. Please, don't do that. Not all at once. No, no, no. Other, nice one, being sewn up in the hide of a buffalo with only the head sticking out and then you were left to die. Mm. And see, I don't know if that's like the skin, the hide, because yes, the then that's bit, just yeah. like a bit of a heavy overcoat. Yeah. Or so maybe you're starved to death because you can't use your hands. It's but, yeah, until you can't eat. But I, I, don't, I don't see what having well, a big leathery jacket helps that. So or, maybe you were sewn up in the buffalo. Kind of Star Wars sort of thing. Yeah. Well, it's hot in there. It's hot in the buffalo. It's quite hot in the buffalo, yeah. Uh, if you didn't want any of those, you might want trial by ordeal. Mm-hmm. And you might want to have a go at the Tangina ordeal. Okay. Now, I believe it's pronounced Tangina. T-A-N-G-E-N-A. So the Tangina, do you know what it is? No, I can't say I do. It's a shrub. Or oh, a shrub. A shrub common to Madagascar. Okay. And it has a plant. It is a plant mm-hmm. that has a fruit. And in that fruit, there is an almond-shaped nut. Mm. But it's not an almond not an almond. It's the tangina nut. And this yeah. is extremely toxic. Okay. It is a famous poison. And it was used in the ordeals and it became the tangina ordeal. The way they did it, and it has got shades of other trial by ordeals mm. using a type of poison. The poison is extracted and the accused is brought before the queen. The accused is given apparently rice water or rice soup, so some liquid. And then they must take the poison extracted from the tangina nut along with three chicken skins. Okay, right. Swallow all that down. Knock all that back. Quite the cocktail. It really is, yeah. I should have made that one. Mm Mm-hmm. And if the accused then vomited up the three chicken skins, one, two, three, they were innocent. Right. If they did not 
bring up all three. They had to bring up all three. They had to bring up all three. But if they didn't, or they foolishly died Fools. from being poisoned, they were guilty. Right. That's interesting. That's the ordeal. That's their trial by ordeal. Okay. Yeah. Now, there are variations of this mm-hmm. in which trials and which hunts around the world. So you mentioned a bean. Yeah. So there's one. There's one. Actually, I remember it because when we had the Patreon episode with, I think it was with Catherine Harkup, mm. right back at the beginning, mm. she, she, she mentioned this particular poison and it, it yeah. stuck it stuck with me bonus um, expert so indeed so we had yeah so trial trial ordeal by bean um, <laughs> <laughs> it was and i think this is a uh, it's the, the the calabar bean from i think predominantly from like around nigeria mm. sort of way and the idea being yeah that you you pop a couple of these beans in if you <laughs> <laughs> um, pop a bean uh, pop, pop a bean in and i must admit i need, I need to do i need to google it if you, if you died you're innocent if you live you were uh, guilty or the other way around yeah. i'm not entirely sure but there was a yeah if you vomited horribly then you were guilty if you didn't you were fine and a lot of people thinking oh i get it out of my system like chewed the bean which only released the yeah. toxin sort of more which made them very very ill and produced them guilty if you just swallowed the thing whole then it would just stay in your system and come out the other end exactly and you survived entirely fine so yeah so there's a different different type of bean so there's there's <laughs> beans and nuts there's, there's various toxins that were used in trial by ordeal and as you said exactly there are some where you had to keep it down mm. and if your body purged it you know like a certain a word poisons it will cause you to purge it will yeah. cause you to throw up and they go oh you're trying to purge it from your system because you can't the lord's <laughs> arsenic will not stay in your system that was a theory, but on this one, it was just a weird kind of admin. The, the old chicken skin thing going on there as well. So yeah, okay. they so they put the chicken skins down. Now you had chicken skin as an ingredient. Yeah, what what cocktail would you would have you come up with with that? Chicken one? skin cocktail. Chicken skin cocktail. Just make some crispy chicken skins on the side to nibble on. Right. So any old cocktail with some crispy chicken skin on the side. We just order some KFC and eat the skin. It may bring it on with the yeah, vodka. Absolutely. With... <laughs> we might do that later. <laughs> After a few more of these best deals. So if you're puking your guts up and for some reason the, 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 the third one doesn't come mm. up or the second one or it gets caught in your throat or anything, you're guilty. And then how will you die? Oh, choose from all of the above, all the things that I've said. How are you going to be killed? You can be stabbed, you can be, or you can be subjected to a far worse death, you know, whether it's all the tortury kind of ways. Now, the Queen saw the Tangina ordeal as a religious trial and many other practitioners of this also saw it as a spiritual thing. The queen reportedly, in the same way that others did, thought this was the will of the gods. Yeah. They were saying that the gods decided if you were yeah. guilty or innocent. This isn't me torturing you. This is no. the test that the, 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 the gods and our ancestors have set in front of you. This will determine whether you live or you die. Others felt that the nut itself was spiritual, that the toxin inside it was a spirit of some mm. kind and it would punish the guilty. So if it poisoned you to death, well, you were guilty, you deserved it. Which is kind okay. of like, so poison is like a spirit. It's like a little ghosty yeah. thing. It said that around half the people who underwent the ordeal died. And a lot of people <laughs> underwent the ordeal mm. during her reign in Madagascar. Around 20% of the population oh, Christ. died as a result of the ordeal in 1838 alone. Bloody hell. So if you want to do the maths around that. That's a lot of people. 20% died. How many people did the ordeal? Mm. There were reports of, or there's there's thoughts that people were subjected to the ordeal again and again yeah. and again. Didn't get the results so, I wanted the first time around. Yeah. Having to have some more. <laughs> well, any little insurgents, mm. anything that, that bothered the queen, apparently would result in this trial and ordeal. Now, this is where people go, okay, is this is this likely? This is where we go into Elizabeth Bath- Bathory territory. Is this getting a little bit... Any excuse she had mm. used this trial and ordeal, it was definitely used yeah. to the point where it was banned years later, officially on record. But there was apparently one story where one of her young nieces died of whooping cough and she put all of the servants who attended her through the ordeal. Oh, because they had let her die. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the abusive servants yeah. in this one, which isn't recorded, but mm. we've covered enough in the other countesses yeah, and the other noble well, women indeed. out there, you know, if it's if it's to be believed. She's all, she's all for the slave trade. I can't imagine she's that bothered about her own servants in the, totally in not, the palace. No. One of her advisors and one of her lovers as well, again, a very complicated name that I 
I'm sorry, I won't pronounce because I tried and I tried and I tried <laughs> and I feel like I would be doing it a disservice. But one of her advisors who was with her and probably fathered her son was put to trial after apparently flirting with another woman. There's some that she caught him with another woman, others that he's looked at another woman. Trial by ordeal was presented to him and he said, just stab me in the throat. Mm. Like, it was like a fuck you to her. It's like, and he said, pointed to the throat and said, do it. And speared through the throat. Mm. I suppose it is a get out of jail free card, really, isn't it? If you're there and you genuinely have a belief in the ancestors and whatever deities that you you believe in, mm. and you say, it's not me doing this stuff. Yeah, one hundred percent. If if you die, then it's because the gods have proclaimed you guilty. Yeah. So I, my conscience is entirely clean. Mm. Is entirely clear of all this stuff. It's a it's a weird logic compared to the witch trials where you've got the trial by water. Where it's like, if you float to the top, which is science, then the devil is saving you. But if you float to the bottom and you die, oh, the Lord wanted you. That's just <laughs> mental. That's just horrible. But this one, at least you have a vague chance. You have a vague chance. You have a vague chance if you puke up enough chickens. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Okay. And you've also taken a toxin, which is going to make you vomit. Yeah. So, hmm. But it's also torturing people. Missionaries gave uh, this one really lurid report of the tortures of Christians. Apparently, there were 15 Christian leaders who were sort of left in Madagascar at this time, and they were all suspended by ropes above a ravine, 150 foot drop to the rocks. Mm. And they were forced, forced to repent, to, to, to renounce their Christian ways, and they refused, so the ropes were cut. Yeah. And they plummeted to their death. Also, tales which I don't believe. The queen coated her feet in poison and had anyone accused kiss her feet. <laughs> if they survived, well, then, you know, the okay. gods were on their side. That's well, just um, ridiculous. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> really... yeah, I mean, It might have happened. You never know. Things that really did happen. Uh, let's stick with those things. Which, which sounds ridiculous, actually, when you say <laughs> it, is she had a really big stroke of good luck. This is back in, actually, 1832, when a Frenchman, Jean Laborde, washed up on her shore, literally. Okay. Yes, it's nice when Frenchmen wash up. In your Indeed, shorts. yeah, absolutely. But he was an adventurer, an engineer. Mm -hmm. He had been sailing around. He was an experienced industrialist, and he was hunting for treasure in shipwrecks. Nice around the coast of Madagascar. But he got shipwrecked, mm. and he was washed ashore, and he was dragged in front of the Queen. She's like, "Hello, Mr. Frenchman." Learned of his skills as an engineer, and decided, right, I'm going to employ you. I'm going to use you. Mm. I'm going to give you labor, forced labor, yeah, resources. Build me factories, produce rifles and cannon. And this sort of started a little mini industrial revolution for the island where he led with her this formation of this area that was producing not only weaponry for the army, but their own goods. So apparently bricks, tiles, pottery, glass, porcelain, silk, soap, Candles. Everyone loves a candle. Everyone loves a candle. Lime, cement, charcoal, all these sorts of things like dyes and fabrics mm. and start trading. Wow. Okay. Yeah. He became one of her most trusted and One advisors. would hope, yeah, obviously. <laughs> and lover, obviously, obviously, it was said, yeah. Said to have fathered her son who became the next king mm. as well. While she despised most Europeans, she saw their usefulness. She made a speech at one point thanking the Europeans, acknowledging their influence mm. on Madagascar of them introducing language different languages excuse me and their culture and art and history and their teachings but also saying stay the fuck out of Madagascar yeah. because don't indoctrine anyone into your religions or your beliefs so we'll take all the good things but then just go away <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much it did succeed in her with this sort of industrial town and all of this production mm. of rifles and cannon making a formidable force against foreign invaders. Now, there are stories, there are stories that both the British and the French decided to gang together to sort of make a shit attack on Madagascar. Maybe it was bad luck when they made this invasion in 1849 that the British and the French decided to sort of sail up to Madagascar, sailed up on the shores thinking, oh, we can take over this little island That's the thing. I, I'm sure it probably did happen because they, they were just like so arrogantly Blase. convinced by their, yeah. their own entire superiority. The what could this little African island possibly have to defeat us? Yes. <laughs> it, it does make sense to a point that... that and, and apparently Britain and France sort of got together on this. Mm. And they were like, even though they would have fought like cats and dogs about who actually owned it, 
but they sailed up and apparently in Madagascar the queen had set up sort of like a false fort on the shores that looked all rickety mm. and kind of, oh, they were like <laughs> yeah we can get through that easily <laughs> but she had a massive fortress behind it so there was this battle on the beach and the British and the French were sent away absolutely defeated <laughs> retreated in some reports it was like yeah yeah they succeeded other reports it was like no some of the soldiers died of malaria <laughs> yeah, well as soon as they set up <laughs> they just dropped dead just dropped dead but the thing that endured afterwards is that after this defeat the heads of 20 European casualties were cut off and put on spikes mm. on the beach and lined up as a nice. message to anyone who dared try to breach their shores in the future okay mm. As her reign went on, she definitely became more erratic, again, if the stories are to be believed. In 1845, very famous this one, she decided she wanted her subjects to go on a buffalo hunt. No. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Big uh, buffalo hunt. Big buffalo hunt. And it's not just a few. It's, it's thousands. It's all of them. As in tens of thousands of people. Go and hunt the buffalo with just minimal supplies... <laughs> through the jungle find some would you they had to go and do this under pain of the massive torture mm. that she threatened them with had to build roads through the jungle dying as they went just dropping dead of no supplies malaria starvation dehydration the hunt lasted four months ten thousand people allegedly died okay. not one buffalo was killed oh that's a disappointment <laughs> There's one guy in the hide not a walking along. Buffalo. No, not a single buffalo. Well, they're shit hunters. Some of them were actually sewn up in the buffaloes, wandering along, going, "Oh yes, no, oh, they'll never all catch in me." Buffalo costume, going. Ah. <laughs> Other fun facts, oh. alleged fun facts as well. She had a tradition where she took a public bath once a year on her balcony. Nice. And they would pour the water over her adoring fans. Oh really. Yes, her subjects, like a blessing, like a blessing. Yeah, drink my bathwater. In your face. Eventually, the plots against her bubble to the surface. Mm. If you have a strong ruler, there's going to be more plots around her. Yeah. Uh, She found out her own son, Rakoto, and her confidant, the Frenchman Laborde, had been plotting against her with the French to drive her from power. Now, she forgave her son, who would later become her heir. Some alleged it was a big double bluff, that the son was working with her to sort of have conspiracies against uh, others so she could identify out the, the spies yeah. Mm. yeah she forgave him which kind of lends credence mm. to this as a very bloody woman she would be like well, well screw you i'll have another son or whatever forgave him and he would succeed her labord the frenchman was apparently sent on a death march Fun. through the jungle malaria everywhere but he survived oh good for him he did quite well the queen ran a belova would not be overthrown, though. She would reign for 33 years. Yeah, that's a damn good going. She died in her sleep in 1861, aged 83. Wow. Well, mm. Succeeded by her son, who would become Radama II. Apparently, on her 12,000 zebu was slaughtered. Do you know a zebu? I don't know what a zebu is. Ah, oh, zebu. It's a bit of cattle, and also it's a good Simpsons reference. Is it? Hump and doolap. Hump. Bandulap. A load of people understand what I mean right. by saying that. Yes. I'm sure it's hilarious. Yes, but it's got a hump and it's got the like the flappy jowls. Okay. The little horns and everything. Zebu. <laughs> I'm Trust, a, yes. It's a thing. It's you a can thing, look apparently. it up later. But twelve thousand zebu twelve thousand of them were slaughtered. <laughs> Meat distributed to the populace in her honour. During her funeral ceremony, apparently a spark from her fucking funeral cortege whatever was happening ignited a barrel of gunpowder <laughs> killed a bunch of people and burnt down three buildings brilliant she died how she lived yeah indeed making an exit <laughs> during her 33 year reign it is estimated that madagascar's population was reduced by up to 50 percent oh, Christ! between sort of 33 and 50 percent from 5 million to 2.5 million that's not ideal mm. 50% of the population wiped out. Mm. Radama II, her son, did not carry on her violent regime. Good, good. Allowed the Christians back in, yeah. tried to reverse a lot of the policy there before being strangled two years after his coronation. Oh. Mm. But the Tangina ordeal was outlawed in 1865. 
four years after the Queen's death. So was she truly a mad queen or was she a fearless, bloody leader? No Mm -hmm. different from plenty of the other males who had come before her and after her as well. She is given the moniker of the bloody queen, the mad queen, the cruel queen. As I said, most of the reports of her would come from very biased sources who could paint her as a brutal mad woman and a savage in very racist terms. When it comes to female rulers in history, particularly those with a bad rep, there's almost an automatic assumption that their stories need to be retold and rewritten with a more sympathetic eye and voice. However, there's no doubt that the Queen was a tyrannous and bloody ruler. Aside from the trials by ordeal, there are plenty of reports about the conditions that her subjects lived in. The number of deaths in her armed forces, the forced labour factories. Are they exaggerated? Maybe a bit. But sometimes a bloody Queen really is a bloody Queen. (laughs) And that is the story. The Mad Queen of Madagascar. Terrifying woman. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So how much did you know? I, I knew bits of it because, uh, yeah, it's one of the sort of I have looked at in the past, but um, not in great detail. Mm. So, yes. Interesting. It's a, it's an interesting one because everyone acknowledges the resources. Mm. A lot written by missionaries, white guys, white yeah. guys, white yeah. British guys, talking about Madagascar and painting her as a savage. As a savage, yes. Which is horrible. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. Well, indeed, uh, <laughs> she definitely did some nasty shit. Yeah. Yeah, she definitely did some horrible, horrible things. So, yeah, she was all for slave trade, trying to yeah. export. I think she did a lot, from what I remember, my wrote it, my, my readings before, she did a lot of trade with the sort of the Arab states and things like yeah. that of getting yep, slaves and things sold mm. there. So, yeah, she was, that was one not of their an, biggest exports. An all benevolent ruler um, no. <laughs> that has been, has been done, the, done the dirty with history. And she was. Yeah, she yeah. wanted to blight out Christianity as yeah. well and was, was very happy to use a heavy hand with that. Yeah. Mm. And so, very, very happy to obviously take the benefits of European mm. new knowledge and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. But then, yeah. And, uh, now, tell, us how, tell me how to make guns, <laughs> then go away. <laughs> I want to make yeah. cannons and then fuck off. Yeah, it <laughs> so, started um, with Christians and there was a lot of like Europeans are not allowed yeah. in Madagascar. And, you know, like her trying to you know forge a country and people sort of acknowledge the fact that she did do good work-ish in terms of making sure the country was self-sufficient. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but at a great cost. Yes, at a, at a very great cost. And indeed. again, looking through the resources from Madagascar, there's not a lot that are going, oh, she's a hero. She's a-. No. They all sort of say, some people think she's a hero. Also, no. Also, no. No, no, no. Yeah. Not so much. It's with balance, with balance. And But also, the only bit of leeway I will give, not for anything that she did, but it's another one where the women's crimes are laid out in great detail. Like, isn't this absolutely horrific and, and an anomaly? Whereas men have been doing it for centuries. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So much. Yeah, every man is is progressive, but they were all slave traders as well. Mm. And they would have been killing people by trial by ordeal, maybe not as much as her, because she was going on a sort of a religious rant. So balance maybe needed, but doesn't make her not a Exactly, doesn't make her not a vicious, terrifying woman. Yes, (laughs) poisony chicken skin woman. Poisony chicken skin woman. And you could have done stuff with chicken skins, I feel. Okay. And buffaloes. I did give you buffaloes. You did. I did try and look for a mozzarella cocktail. You know, what you... <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think, people? What do you think of the story of the Queen of Madagascar? Do you think she is fairly labelled the Bloody Queen? And do you believe the stories about her and her zealous pursuit of supremacy for her country and her horrible, horrible ways that she <laughs> tortured all the Christians? Do you think it all actually happened? Or do you think it needs to be treated with a pinch of salt? Tell us what you think. Jump on the comments of this episode and tell us your thoughts, your theories, your feelings. But most importantly, you must mix up a Bastille. Oh, oh, well, it was good. It was best so one, good. Best one in many a week. In, in, in decades. It would blown away. <laughs> so yeah, recipe will be out on Friday. It's got some weird stuff in there. Go and buy it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> or when you're at a cocktail bar. Yeah, absolutely. Give them our recipe. Yeah. But it's, it's oh yeah. I it's was, so good. 
delightfully surprised by that. It's so nice to have Lovely. a delicious, del- genuinely mm. deliciously good cocktail. So go and make this one and enjoy it for spooky season. If you haven't already, please join us on Patreon to get more episodes from the Poisonous Cabinet every single week and leave us a review on Apple iTunes because it really, really helps our podcast and leave reviews for other podcasts that you love as well. Thanks for listening, guys. We have been the people inside the Poisonous Cabinet. We will see you next week. And remember, your loved ones are trying to kill you. Bye.